friends let us continue our discussion on stability of chemical reactors but before we uh, go uh, to this example little background if you recall in our last session we saw that when we are looking at the behavior of an adiabatic uh, stirred tank reactor or even a stirred tank reactor with a jacketed vessel in which exothermic reaction is taking place there is a possibility that there will be more than one steady state depending upon the operating condition that we choose we also saw that there were three steady states for example in a case of adiabatic reactor now out of this two steady states are inherently stable as we call them last time and one was inherently unstable so what we will do in today's class is to look at some formal definition of stability and look at the condition which needs to be satisfied for a steady state to be stable or a uh, uh, steady state is unstable so let's start this discussion by looking at a system whose dynamics is given by x dot equal to f of x note here we assume that this is the dynamics which describe how system which is represented by state vector x so this is a vector in n dimensional space so it has components for example x1 x2 up to up to xn okay so this is a n dimensional space that we are we are looking at now we would like to know the steady state which uh, satisfies this dynamics so let's say that that steady state is x of x of s okay again again a vector and by very definition of a steady state it implies that x s dot when x is equal to xs which is f of xs which is zero that is steady state implies that dynamics has has disappeared and we have reached a steady state which is invariant with time and hence the time derivative is it de derivative is zero so we would like to know whether this steady state xs is stable or otherwise this is the question that we are trying to answer in today's today's session first thing that comes to mind is what is meant by stable so what is a proper definition of a st state to be uh, stable a steady state to be stable so let's try to look at that by considering our dynamics let's say x dot equal to f of x and let us say that its solution or its trajectories are given by some function phi of t that is we don't know what this solution is but let us say that that solution is represented as some function phi of t where i is 1 2 up to n our n dimensional uh, space so what this trajectory or what these solutions imply is a movement in n dimensional space of how x will change as the time time progresses this xi as phi of t is referred to as trajectory of xi that is how i changes with changes with time and we are now interested for example in looking at let's say we have two dimensional uh, space okay for our simplicity we'll keep the discussion to two dimensional but the same applies idea applies to uh, 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 higher dimensional problems also so we have one solution x1 which is phi1 of t and let's say x2 is 
phi 2 of t. Okay. So, if I were to plot x 1 versus time, let us say this is that this is that solution and this corresponds to x 2 versus time some some function. So, this is my phi 2 and the first function is let us say phi 1 of t. We now say that given this solution we may not know that solution, but let us assume for sake of sake of argument that we know this solution. Then I can invert these relationships that is I know x 1 as a function of time, I know x 2 as a as a function of time. So, I can always generate x 1 as some function of x 2 and this is what is called as phase space that is representing one solution in terms of another another variable okay few definitions before we before we actually look at look at uh, uh, the definition of stability itself so all we have done in writing this x1 as a function of x2 is having known that x1 is phi1 of t x2 is phi2 of t I have just eliminated time and expressed x1 as a function of some function of uh, function of uh, uh, x2. Let us let us introduce a concept of what we call Euclidean distance between points x and y. Okay, in general. And we will make use of this Euclidean distance uh, in describing what is meant by stability and so on. So, e Euclidean distance between point x and y is defined as summation x i minus y i the whole square i going from 1 to n components. So, we have two points x and y and the Euclidean distance between these two is what we call norm of x minus y and that is summation x i minus y i the whole square and this summation is over all the components n components of our space state uh, vector and raised to raised to power power half. One more, one more uh, idea before we go to the definition of definition of uh, uh, stability. Let us define an region S of R and C, which is denotes a region for a two dimensional space, it will be a spherical uh, 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 region of 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 center c center c and radius radius r okay and c is 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 said to be the critical point now wh wh why do we say c is the critical point with c equal to equal to 0 in our in our uh, considerations of stability of a steady state what we are going to what we are going to assume is y is 0 and it will become clear why y is y is 0 when we actually look at look at one particular particular system so if y is 0 then we can call the uh, st uh, steady state solution as x equal to 0 and this will become clear when we actually look at look at uh, the the problem on hand namely stability of a, a steady state. We will start with the first definition and that per pertains to this particular particular part and I will explain what it what it what it means in in with an example, but let me just read it out to begin with a state x equal to 0 and we just now saw that by putting y equal to 0 our steady state has become x equal to 0. A state x equal to 0 
is said to be stable when given some epsilon which is greater than 0, there exists a delta, delta such greater than 0 and delta between 0 and epsilon such that the norm of if norm of x 0 is less than delta, then the norm of x of t, we are defined this norm just now, is less than epsilon for all time t greater than greater than 0. Okay. Now, this will will simplify this for a two dimensional problem to see what is actually the definition of de definition of uh, 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 stability. Okay. So, let us go back to two dimensional system and first of all first of all uh, let us let us say that we have a steady state x equal to 0 and we are trying to look at whether that steady state is stable stable or not. So, let us say that in a two dimensional two dimensional space let us say we have only x 1 x 1 and x 2. Let us say this this represents my steady state that is x equal to 0. Now, I call this steady state stable for the case where I can find some delta and some epsilon such that 0 less than delta less than epsilon such that let us say that circle is S of center 0 and radius delta. So, this radius is, is delta. Now, around this steady state point x equal to 0, I have a circle of, of radius delta and if I can say that if I can find for all the points in this circle, wherever, wherever I, I, I uh, start, if my norm of, so for all x of 0 less than delta, okay. remember no, this, no, this, this uh, norm of x of 0 with 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 this definition when y is 0 this is nothing but for for will be nothing but x1 at 0 value square plus x20 square raised to half so this being less than delta which for 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 a two dimensional system now is represented by this by this point delta all my x of t now what is my x of t norm of x of t is nothing but x1 of t the whole square plus x2 of t the whole square because our other point is 0 raised to half remains within this circle of radius epsilon. So, let me say that this represents my s of 0 and epsilon. Then starting with this x of 0, the green point which I said, my system is said to be stable if solution as a function of time remains in this circle of radius epsilon for all times from time t equal to 0 to time t equal to t equal to uh, infinity. Okay. This is what I call a stable steady state. 
once again the idea is idea is simple i want to know whether my x of 0 is stable or not that stable uh, definition formal definition says that for some region in the neighborhood of x equal to 0 if my initial starting point lies in this small neighborhood then my dynamics requires that if the solutions for all times x of t t greater than 0 remains within this neighborhood of epsilon then i say that this point is point is stable so what it means is suppose i start over here the solution may look different but for all times if i remain in this in this region i would call such such steady state x equal to 0 as as a stable steady state now the second definition which talks about whether the steady state is attractive and this is this particular particular uh, portion once again i will read it out to you <coughs> a stable x equal to 0 is said to be asymptotically attractive when given mu greater than 0 such that for all x that is norm of x less than mu the limit as t goes to infinity the norm of x goes to goes to 0 this is when we say that this system is asymptotically attractive now let us go back and see what is what is meant by asymptotically attractive state this is what this is what we said about asymptotically stable now for asymptotically asymptotically uh, 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 attractive attractive state what we are saying once again for x equal to 0 if we can find some region as denoted by s of 0 and radius radius mu and the starting point somewhere somewhere over here then for all for all x of 0 less than mu limit as t goes to infinity norm of x of t is 0 if we can satisfy that condition then we say that our state is asymptotically attractive now what is the meaning of norm of x of t going to going to 0 if we look at our definition of norm this can happen only when x1 and x2 individually goes to 0 because norm of x of t is x1 square plus x2 square and summation raised to square root that is power half so for norm of x of t to go to 0 at long times both x1 has to go to 0 x2 has to go to 0 that means that is our steady state what is our steady state x equal to 0 that means x1 equal to 0 x2 equal to 0 so what this attractive definition says is that at this starting from here at long times we actually actually go to the go to the state x equal to 0 the definition of stability alone said that from all all such starting points we remained in the close neighborhood of close neighborhood of uh, uh, x equal to 0 the definition of attractive state asymptotically attractive state says that for all such starting points 
we actually go to steady state x equal to 0 uh, uh, as as time time progresses. Now comes the definition of our asymptotically stable steady state which says that a steady state A steady state is said to be asymptotically stable and when it is stable and asymptotically asymptotically attractive. Now, state is said to be marginally stable when it is stable but not asymptotically asymptotically attractive. Now, at first glance this definition may seem to have some redundancy in it saying that it should be stable and asymptotically attractive. Does not definition of stability indirectly or directly imply attractive and definition of attractive directly or indirectly encompasses the definition of stability. The next set of examples will convince you that that is not necessarily the necessarily the, the case. So, what we are seeing here is a s example on the first hand, on the first hand uh, an example of, of dynam whose dynamics is given by this x and y and its steady state value is when x is equal to 0, y is equal to equal to 0. Now, if you actually look at the dynamics of this system and try to try to try to look at the trajectories it turns out that you try to take any any starting starting condition as time progresses it actually comes back to 0 and 0 so system is attractive but from a definition of stability of the system, remember what was the definition of stable, stable system? For any starting point within this region delta, our solutions always remained within, within epsilon. Now, it turns out for this particular example on the, on the left hand side, it is impossible to find for given this starting point in some region delta, it is impossible to find an epsilon such that the solution is entirely within this within this epsilon region. So, it does is an attractive state that is solutions eventually go to x equal to 0, but it is not a stable state. So, this is an example of attractive but not stable. On the right hand side is another example dx dt equal to y and dy dt equal to x whose again steady state solution is x equal to 0 and y equal to y equal to 0. Now, if we if we start with some starting point let us say let us say over here the dynamics of this system keeps it on this circle or a limit limit cycle. So, the solution never actually converges so it never goes to goes to 0. So, that never happens. So, what what does it mean? It means that for this particular example, we can always find an epsilon and delta such that the long time solution is within this bounded within this region region epsilon. But so it is a stable steady state, but it is not an attractive steady state because solution does not does not eventually go to go to x equal to 0. So, this is stable, but not attractive and hence 
to to have an asymptotically stable stable solution we need both a state has to be stable and asymptotically asymptotically attractive so we call a steady state asymptotically stable only when the stable it is stable according to this definition and it is asymptotically attractive according to according to this definition so that that is the that is the uh, 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 that is how we define an asymptotically stable so when we are talking about the talking about the uh, stability of a steady state uh, uh, or otherwise we are looking at asymptotically stable steady states of course a system is is said to be unstable when it is not stable i mean that is that is uh, that is uh, 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 understood okay so now let's go back to our dynamics and try to see how can we how can we uh, uh, find out the stability of a steady state uh, for which we have a dynamics which is which is uh, given by given by x dot equal to f of x so we want to find the stability of the steady state that is when x dot is equal to 0 when x at that time is some steady state excess so we would like to know how to find the stability of of uh, uh, such uh, such uh, steady state now before we actually find the stability and determine the criteria we are going to do a small small uh, 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 variation in the sense that we are going to look at how the behavior of the system is away from the steady state value remember when we talked about the definition we said that this is my this is my steady state this is my steady state and this is my starting point in the close neighborhood of this of this steady state we of course also said that we are going to call x equal to 0 as our as our uh, uh, steady state steady state value okay okay so what are we what are we uh, 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 going to do we are actually going to look at the perturbation of my system because what is what is the meaning that i start from this particular point that means i have perturbed my steady state by some quantity in this case by by a small small quantity so let me enlarge it so a small small perturbation so i'm going to look at what happens when i introduce a small perturbation what happens to my what happens to my uh, solution so now in order to in order to keep the discussion with a stay uh, uh, with a uh, x equal to 0 as as my steady state i'm going to define the variable y as x minus xs okay so if i if i uh, do that then i can write y dot as x dot minus xs excess uh, uh, dot right i'm going to further further going to write i know x equal to xs is my steady state so i know xs dot is equal to 0 and i know my x dot is f of x and this quantity is quantity is 0 so what what i am going to do now is i am going to write f of x in the following manner 
I am going to expand using Taylor series, Taylor series uh, 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 expansion and this would around the steady state value x of s. So, this will be f of x of s plus remember x is a n component component quantity. So, I will have terms like del f i uh, or, 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 or let me let me write it for f of x 1 okay, to begin with. So, f of x of s plus I am going to expand this using using uh, 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 Taylor series Taylor series expansion. So, this will be del f 1 del x 1 into x 1 minus x 1 s plus del f 1 del x 2 into x 1 minus x 1 minus uh, sorry x 2 minus x 2 s and 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 so on. Or in short if I now generalize this then I can write f of any x i as f of x s plus summation del f i del x j x j minus x j s j going from 1 to n plus I will of course have second order term higher order term. So, I will have terms like del square del x k x j x j minus 0 uh, x j minus x j s into x k minus x k s and so on. A simple simple Taylor series Taylor series expansion right. So, now knowing this and making another assumption that I am going to neglect all higher order term and keep only the first order first order first order term. That means, I am going to neglect all these all these terms and then go back to my y dot equation go, go back to my y dot equation which is which is actually nothing but f of x and I am going to put for that. So, that would be y dot equal to this has this has uh, 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 gone to 0 or if I want to write y i dot for example, that will be f of x i which will be summation del f i del x j and x j minus x j is, is nothing but is nothing but y j right. So, this if I write for all such i's y 1, y 2, y, y i up to y n and put all these things together I will have the dynamics the perturbation dynamics y dot defined as if I just expand these terms we have y 1, y 2, y n and the first term here will be del f 1 del x 1 del f 1 del x 2 del f 1 del x 3 del f n del x n right. So, all these similar quantities up to del uh, sorry del f 1 del x n del f n del x n. Okay. So, I will have I will have all these all these uh, terms which now I can write in a more compact form as y dot equal to 
a of y where a is my jacobian matrix del f1 del x1 del f1 del x2 del f1 del x3 and so on and so forth up to up to so this is my is my dynamics of my perturbation variable y and i am interested in knowing what happens what is the steady state solution of this y is equal to 0 remember our y is x minus xs so when x reaches a steady state xs my y is y is 0 and this will then tell me that if i start with some y of 0 having a value delta let us say something like this what happens to my y of t does it go back here does it go somewhere else and so on and so forth so that will then tell me what is the solution or what is the status of this steady state f of x of x of s let me let me recap what we what we saw uh, just now before i go on to describing the solution of these of these uh, uh, status or how do we how do we find this condition for condition for stability let us put things in perspective we have a system whose dynamics is given like this whose dynamics is given in this particular particular manner okay what we are trying to trying to find out is is if the steady state x equal to xs is the steady state solution of this such that xs dot equal to f of x equal to equal to 0 is it is it stable or otherwise that is the question that we have in front of us in order to make this question little less abstract let us go back let us go back to our problem of reaction engineering and let us try to make this little less abstract. So, let me let me see if I can ok. I am looking at stability of a CSTR. So, from our pre last sessions, uh, la last session, we know that this is my CSTR operation for which mass balance equations and energy balance equations are given in this particular particular manner. Okay, DC one. We are looking at reaction A one going to A two in this CSTR who which for which we are trying to maintain a steady state and by providing a cooling jacket or a jacket in which a coolant is being being circulated at a temperature TR and we are trying to find out this the steady state operations and what is what is possible or otherwise. So, what we did last time was we defined defined this non dimensional quantities we define these non dimensional quantities we define these non dimensional quantities and converted this dimensional form of mass and energy balance into the non dimensional form of mass and energy balances mass and energy energy balances okay now we will take these mass and energy balances and represent it in the form of 
heat generation term and heat removal term as we have done over here. So, what, what I am going to do is I am going to rewrite those mass and energy balances just to just to uh, uh, keep things in a proper proper perspective. So, we can and I am going to take only first order reaction ok simplify matter considerably. So, we had our dimensionless mass balance in terms of dimensionless concentration as one minus x and we had our dimensionless temperature as B into R minus Q R and we call this B into R term as Q G. Okay. We are interested. So, first of all let us define our our steady state uh, solution as x equal to x s some dimensionless quantity and theta equal to theta s. Okay. So, then we will define the perturbation variable we, we are looking at only two dimensional system over here that makes matters little easy. So, we will define our perturbation variable y 1 as x minus x s and y 2 as theta minus theta s. Okay. So, given this going back to going back to this what is our what is our dynamics x equal to f of x x equal to f of x for example, if I write x and this is not to be confused with dimensionless quantities the notation is little unfortunate, but let us let us stick with that x and theta then my x dot equal to f of x my f will be f 1 and f 2 where f 1 is this whole quantity and f 2 is this whole quantity or in other words my f 1 f 1 is minus x by k 0 tau r plus e raise to theta by 1 plus theta by gamma into 1 minus x and my f 2 is b into r minus q r. Okay. So, these are my f 1 and f 1 and f 2 then this is my steady state solution x equal to x of s. So, that steady state steady state uh, uh, solution last time we saw that steady state solution are these three steady state solutions or depending upon the operating operating conditions. So, this is when q r is equal to q g and so on. So, I am actually trying to look at look at those solutions x equal to x s theta equal to theta s and for which I define my perturbation variables y 1 and y 2 as x minus x s and theta minus theta s such that I can write I can write my my solution of x dot equal to f of x and in terms of in terms of my dimensionless dimensionless quantities my y dot my y dot which is a of y this is the equation that I am looking at, looking for q 
can now be written in the following manner. Remember our y dot which is y 1 dot and y 2 dot which is equal to in the real terms dimensionless concentration and dimensionless temperature that is deviation from the steady state value. This is the real quantity that we are looking at and these are my F 1 and F 2. So, this quantity, this quantity is now nothing but del F 1 del x del F 1 del theta del F 2 del x del F 2 del theta into y 1 and y 2, where what is del F del x? Derivative of this F 1 with respect to x del F 1 del F theta derivative of f 1 with respect to theta and and so on. And this vector uh, matrix we call as Jacobian matrix A bar and wrote the dynamics y dot equal to and we are interested in looking at solution of this of this y. Now, how do we get the solution of this y? To do that, let's let's look at our dynamics y dot equal to sorry, y is a vector and a and uh, is a is a is a matrix. Now I want to look at look at solution of this of this uh, uh, matrix. Okay. Let us define, let us define y and we will we'll come to that in a minute what is all this y as matrix V into into z. What is matrix V? Matrix V is the matrix of eigen vectors of A, eigen vectors of A. What are what are eigen vectors, matrix of eigen vectors? Given this matrix A, it satisfies this particular condition, right? This you know from your mathematics. Where what is what is the matrix lambda? Lambda matrix is a diagonal matrix of eigen values lambda 1 lambda n. So, and what is this what is this matrix we want? So, there are lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n represent n eigen values of this Jacobian matrix A. Then v 1 is the eigen vector corresponding to matrix matrix uh, eigen value lambda 1. So, matrix consisting of v 1, v 2 these are my this is this makes my eigen vector matrix v and we know this from the definition of eigen eigen value. Okay. So, if we now look at look at our y dot equal to a y and define y equal to v into z, then what do we get? Then we get y dot which is v z dot is a v z by putting in for y equal to v z on both sides of this equation. So, what do I get? I get y dot or other let us not worry about y dot anymore. I get I get v z dot equal to a v a v z. 
so if i post pre multiply both sides by v inverse i get z dot equal to v inverse a v z but what is v inverse a v remember our a v equal to lambda v where lambda is a is a is a diagonal diagonal matrix so this gives us v inverse a v is nothing but z dot equal to equal to lambda z lambda is a diagonal matrix so we can write the solution of this as z i of t is some z i 0 e raised to lambda 1 t and similarly or lambda i t so for i equal to 1 2 up to n or in other words in other words what do we have here we have defined our y as z uh, 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 v into v into z and individually z solution is given like this it implies that the solution y of, of t is given by some constant c1 let us say e raised to lambda 1 t plus c2 e raised to lambda 2 t plus c3 e raised to lambda 3 t and so on that constants will come from all these combinations of eigen vector and z i 0 values and so on. So, what do we what do we what do we get here? Now, what are what are we interested in? We were interested in looking at the dynamics of this solution given y of 0 as some value delta let us say. We know that these components individual components y i are, are uh, uh, given by summation of this summation of this e raise to lambda t terms. We are interested in knowing what happens to y of t, what happens to y of t. Now, even without even without knowing much of mathematics we can take a simple example let's say that we are just have one one dimensional problem okay lambda 1 t now suppose suppose y is equal to 0 this is against time and this is i'm plotting y1 y equal to 0 is the is the uh, solution so suppose i'm starts at t equal to 0 i start somewhere over here. Now, what will happen to as time progresses will depend upon what is the magnitude of this lambda 1 or what is the sign of this lambda 1. Suppose lambda 1 is 0, then what happens? The solution will remain something like this. Okay? This is for lambda 1 equal to 0. Suppose lambda 1 is a positive term then what will happen to this solution as time increases y1 will keep on increasing i don't know in the in the exponential form okay, in the exponential form so this is for lambda 1 greater than 0 but what will happen if lambda 1 is less than 0 for lambda 1 less than 0 as time increases y1 will go to 0 And isn't this this is what we are looking for our stable system? Indeed, that is given a small perturbation. If I go back to my original steady state, that is, it is stable and attractive. I call such system as asymptotically stable. And this simple example would have convinced you that that depends upon the sign of of the eigen value so to summarize we say that a, st a system is asymptotically stable if 
real value because eigen values can be complex so we are interested only in the real part of the eigen value so if real part of the eigen value is negative for all eigen values not just one or two but for all eigen values then we call such system as asymptotically stable if among all n values if any one is positive the real part is positive the system is unstable if the real part is zero we cannot say anything about stability of this of this system we'll stop here for this session but in the next session we will look at the behavior of this system and try to analyze whether our stable uh, our steady state we got for our cstr problem whether they are stable or unstable thank you